And we only got this past week they told me they wasn't gonna have no minutes for two weeks due to the bad cold weather coming on. That's right. Put it in your pocket. Cold weather coming on. Yeah. And uh, imagine Perigu was down there, they're gonna maybe take two or three days off. And what's it supposed to be? Three degrees, two degrees, one degree. Something ridiculous. So right now the only thing I'm done is the this is the minnow I got right now, and that's a toughie. A that's, toughie. A, that's a chub. Oh, that's a chub. Mm -hmm. So you've showed me chubs before. Right, that's a toughie. Why, it's they're, called a toughie or a chub? They're tougher, stay alive a little longer. And uh, I think down there in Florida, this may be the only thing you can get. Gotcha. You don't have say in what minnows you, you get from them? To a certain size, but right now I ain't got no say at all because they're not got any in stock waiting on them maybe the warmer weather come on and uh, that's where I is it a certain type of cricket or just gray cricket black crickets ain't no good they're wild crickets you don't want to buy a wild cricket These come from where? Timberline raises these. South American. Here's the mealworm. Let me pour them out for you. What's the difference between that and a wax worm? Night and day. <laughs> You've heard me say that before. Yeah, I know. But this is a hard body. Okay? Right. And this is more or less to feed pets. Uh, it used to be a good bait fish, but even more it's the wax worm has tucked these over. Gotcha. Now here is another one. This is called a super worm. Ooh. What's a super worm for? Uh, feed pets. Some people do fish with them. And are they just are they just bigger? Big, right? They don't have to be refrigerated either. Super okay, there's a there's a regular a mealworm right there, see? Right. Let's see what we got in here. And this is a wax worm. This is your bluegill, your crappie. You're right. Tip a jig with it or Do you think it's the movement of the of the wax worm or do you think it's the smell? I think it's the smell. Okay. And those you have to keep refrigerated. Keep them cooler, right. And we keep, we like, the cooler, uh, refrigerator is too cold, so we put them in a cooler. Try to drop the temperature a little bit. And I don't think I got any large minnows. Let's see, I maybe a medium. Let's see here. I don't want to show them anyway because they're dead. Yep. And that's all of the medium I got. And I don't know, I don't think I'll get any today. So did you play tennis or is this somebody else's racket? <laughs> that's somebody else's racket. Ooh, those are really big. Remember for the wood bees? Remember the wood bees? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Who would use a minnow that big? Catfishmen, bass fishermen, uh, walk-in ponds. We got good walk-in ponds. The information center down here. Right. They use a large minnow. Why would that like refer a large minnow? Because they got the bass in there. See. Right. They, it's trophy fish. They catch. They can catch a 20-inch bass. I think it's, you can keep. I think you you can keep one. Right. 18 inch. 
What's the story on this guy here? Uh, you ever heard of Art Boatwright? Arthur Boatwright? Mm -hmm. He's a wood carver. He did the horse over there at John A. Logan. General Logan? Okay, gotcha. He did that. Okay, he did the turkey over there. This poster went to somebody else, and Ron ended up getting it. He pawned it off on me. It had some class to it, you know. Right. A Marine would like to have that, you know what I mean. And here's a new bait that... Uh, boy out of Carpendale is trying to put these on, trying to start this. Right now, the supplies are low. Well, that's not fishing season, really. Well, it is. It is for the diehards. Well, the diehards are going to be ice fishermen if, they, if the ice gets on the ground here Monday. I say Monday because it's supposed to be like, what, four, five, six days in a row? Right. Time to, it can make ice. I think it's already made ice if you go around the lakes. Oh, Cambria next? Huh? I'm worried about Crab Orchard. I was going to go by, the, by there next and check it out. Me and Boone are supposed to fish crab just because I want to mix it up. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah, I could mess up pretty easy on this, couldn't he? <laughs> Not have something on. Thank you, did. And because I didn't pay attention to the details, I uh, recorded without sound. <laughs> so what what is your uh, what's your last name? Reed. R W E D. All right, we're here at uh, Cooksey's Bait Shop with Ron Reed. He's been here for how many? Forty years. Forty years. Mm -hmm. How did Cooksey's Bait Shop? How did you get the name Cooksey's? That was my wife's name. Her folks were when they started it back oh. in uh, 62. Yeah. So it's been here since 62. What'd you do before the bait shop? Construction. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You just did a lot of fishing during construction that you... Been known to do a little bit of fishing. All right. So I've got some questions for you. All right. So you gave us the history. Did you always have minnows or did... No, we've always had minnows. So why did you start the bait? Why did they start the bait shop? Because there wasn't anything local, right? Was it primarily just for crime? And they lived here, they lived and here. and uh, Grandma was at home, and her daddy worked on construction. He's a heavy equipment operator, so he's gone. So Grandma started selling, being open, selling minnows. Nobody around, you know, going fishing and everything. So it's only natural to. Sell so bait. What's the most popular bait you sell? Minnows <laughs> and jigs. So I don't. I'm not as big on jigs as the other boys, but I sell a few jigs. What about crickets? I sell a lot of crickets. But any more crickets used to be for fish bait. Now it's made for pay, uh, pets, and that's the change. When we first started, we sold a hundred and forty thousand crickets in nine days. When you say you first started, you mean back in... 1940. No, no, 1940. We, we had a week there. It was a memorial weekend and like two, a ten-day, more or less. And we sold 140,000 crickets. Everybody come in and wanted crickets for bluegill fishing. You know, that was the main thing. Brim, bluegill, and that's more or less was hot back then. Then the waxworms took over, and the waxworms kind of took the place of the crickets. Why and do you think that is? It's easier, faster. Right, and they stay long. They stay alive longer. Right, a cricket's good for ninety days. Is a cricket's life. We get them when they're about eighty days old. So we only got short term, short, what, three or four days to sell them. So there's going to be some die in the meantime, but anyway, you haven't got a very small window there, you got to sell them. And the waxworms, you can put them in the cooler and keep them alive a little longer. 
What's the story on the minnows then? Minnows is still there. There's a lot of people still like to use minnows. But the longevity of them in your store, they last longer? Are they? No, no, they don't last as long. If I got fresh minnows, they'll last probably two weeks before they start dying very bad. Now, if they're old minnows when I got them, I'm doomed. And it depends on whether they sell a lot of minnows in Paragou, Arkansas. Change over, you know. Where the timberline buys them pretty regular and their fish is bite good. Right. And if the fish ain't a bite and nobody's fishing, that's bad news. Because you bring them in the back door and take them out the front, that's, that's, good, that's good business. And this past year, we've had a rough time of it during the, we had a spell there of a month that fish weren't biting, people weren't biting. So that, that's a bad combination there. But um, there is a lot of people that still like to use minnows, thank God, instead of all the jiggers. A jigger is a nervous fisherman. He ain't got patience. Now he'll come back to the area and fish it four or five different times. Right. But he'll go down and fish it. All right, give me a, what lake has the biggest crop? Crop I guess Lake of Egypt has. The biggest crappie? The biggest crappie. And uh, let's say Ken K is supposed to have the biggest, okay? Right. But I mean productive. You know, you go down there Lake Region, you can catch some two pounders. Okay. Uh, Ken K, you catch occasional three pounder. But the guys who catches Lake of uh, Ren Lake's got some good crappie. Crab Orchard's proved this year that it has some good crappie. And but I believe that is blamed on because they're letting them take as many crappie out of it. Right. There's no limit. There's no limit. This, this in fact, is good for business because they'll come from Chicago, St. Louis, down here and fish a day. I've got guys that come from the Quad City areas down here, and they'll stay five days. They don't have to worry about a limit. And they can take home a thousand fish. So in my opinion, crab has the, the worst reputation in terms of the size of fish that you're going to catch. But I don't think that's true. Not this year. Not this year? There, this came on, but because I think it's come on is because that there's more little fish taken out. Right. So you got more food for the big fish to eat on. And that's, but I'm afraid when Bickers goes, we get a new man in here on the biologist that he might think, hey, this is the way it should be now, you know. New kid on the block think you're going to change things. I hate to see that come. So you're worried that they will put a limit on crap? They will be. I, I there think, will be eventually. I believe but there is. All right, if you had one lake to fish, which one would it be? Crab Orchard. Why? But that's me. Why? I know Crab Orchard a little better. I don't know Lake of Egypt. I don't know K, uh, Kincaid. You know. What about Grassy and Devil's Kitchen? You got they're, good, right they're good lakes. They're good lakes. Um, and you got a few people to fish it hard and heavy. And Little Grassy probably was the one known to go out and catch it two and a half, three pounder occasionally, you know. Right. But you don't hear too much of it anymore. And I don't know why. It's just maybe less people fished it. I don't hear much people talking about Devil's Kitchen. I mean, other than Devil's Blue Hill or Redier. Devil's Kitchen's a hard lake to fish because it's so deep. But and the good fish always came at nighttime, fish it up to midnight around the dam. And uh, like you, I've seen some good fish come in and down there. <laughs> but there's a few select few that done it. I got some guys that used to come in from Ziegler and they'd fish it maybe right. once or twice a week. And uh, Marion City Lake used to be known as Big Crappie. Big, but I know uh, nothing about that lake other than I see it on 57. Well, it's, it's I don't gone. Even, I don't even get access to it. 
Well, you got to go on 37. Yeah. And going around that way. Reservoir Road, that takes you right into Marion Sea Lake. And that's a public lake? Public lake, right. Ten mile an hour uh, boat limit? No, they took that off. Made it, you can run anything on it. Just keep your island speed down. But I've seen three pounders come out of there. Out of Marion Lake? Mm-hmm. But it's been a long time ago. So are you a bigger fisherman or a hunter? I like to probably like to turkey hunt. I like to fish, but you can only do what you gotta do, you know. So I see the deer. <laughs> well, I see deer. <laughs> deer above you. Right. Mm-hmm. But then, you know. But I don't we don't do a lot of we just go out and we we shoot a deer or whatever. So mainly fishing. Fishing. Fish much anymore? Once a year. Once a year. <laughs> and I'll fish the catfish tournament that John A. Logan has. Yeah. But uh, that's about it. Used to go to the river a lot. But my, my buddy passed on and we quit that. Gotcha. You know, the bluegill come from a pond over there on behind Ike Buick. The guy snuck in on the pond. Never snuck in. He went in there proudly and fished. And that was a two and a quarter pound bluegill. The red ear come from Marion Country Club. I think that weighed right at two pound even. The crappie is a crappie that somebody never said it wasn't his. And he wouldn't take it when the Ziggler boys mounted it. And you get a lot of that stuff. You know how the fish don't look quite as big after you caught it and left. <laughs> Mermet's probably the best. You think it's still the best? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I had the guys went late this year and had 72 red ear. Two guys went down across 72 red ear. I've even heard higher, way higher than that. I mean, I talk no, no, I'm talking about up to pound, pound and a quarter, pound and a half red oh, ear. They've been doing that out of that lake for a long time. When That's was the last time you sold a trailer park? <laughs> well, they've been pretty well regular. Trailer parts is something we sell. That's one of our better deals. Trailer parts? Mm-hmm. Oh, right behind you. That's what you did. The bearings. Trailer bearings. Trader Springs has died down a little bit since I don't sell trailers anymore. But I still try to have them on stock in case somebody needs them. <laughs> and that's one of the better jigs I think is in the shop is the old Fuzzy Grub. Have you ever used it? No. Show that's that's cotton mouth. Where's that? Is it here? On back on the right. You'll run right into it. On around the bend. On around. On around. On around. Turn around. Right there, them fuzzy grubs. Oh, so any of these guys? Yeah. Do you think that's the best bait? I think that's a, one of the that's a, one of the better baits that you can give to a, 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 new, a new fisherman because he can that does its own self. That's the, the hair. It is you just walk it, the docks, and it will jig itself. Work. Owning about. The worst thing owning a bait shop and the best is working, working it, and not being able to fish it. You know, but you still you're all the BS, and that's the main thing about a bait shop, all the BS you hear. <laughs> if it wasn't for that, it wouldn't be worth a damn. 